This video will explain how to get the most performance out of the Tesla Model 3. Well, I got a Tesla. I guess we're looking at the future. Guess we'll all be running around these or golf carts one in the next uh, 10 years or so. Not me. stock in sport mode without any preconditioning the model 3 performance is capable of doing 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3.28 seconds without subtracting the one foot rollout or 3.10 seconds with the one foot rollout subtracted bone stock without any preconditioning directly before the run it is capable of doing the eighth mile in 7.37 seconds at 95 plus miles per hour and the quarter mile in 11.55 seconds at 116 miles per hour However, you need to have at least 95% battery charge, and you really need to supercharge within half an hour of the run to get at least some heat in the battery. Carwell and other sites have typically stated a quarter mile time of 11.7 seconds or more for a Model 3 performance. They aren't setting the car up properly, which totally misrepresents what the car is capable of. If they follow the instructions in this video, they can get those quarter mile times all the way down to 11.43 at 117 plus miles per hour for a 100% stock Model 3 performance with the 20 inch Uber Turbine wheels or 11.27 seconds at 121.79 miles per hour with that car and some modifications. The first thing you need to do is heat up the battery. If you use the in-car navigation to direct the car to the closest supercharger, it will preheat the battery. This can take up to 15 minutes sometimes, but is probably the single biggest factor in improving the acceleration of the car. As soon as you stop supercharging and preconditioning, the battery will start to rapidly cool down. Just saying that you had supercharged that day isn't good enough to get max performance out of the car. If it is cold out, then the battery will cool down and your times will be much slower. You really need to supercharge to 100% and then use preconditioning right before your run to get the max performance. I use the sexy buttons from Abstract Ocean to monitor the temperatures of the battery and to track the horsepower and torque of the car. The latest beta version of the sexy buttons app allows me to monitor the battery temperatures before the run and then track what horsepower and torque is being reported for the car throughout a quarter mile run. This information is incredibly useful in determining how close I am getting to the maximum performance of the car. The sexy buttons do a lot more than just monitor these parameters, but they are worth getting just for this data alone. I'm able to plot out a rolling dyno for each one of the, my quarter mile passes and compare that to previous runs to see where I'm faster and slower. I highly recommend everyone get the sexy buttons for their car. For max performance, you typically want to see at least 47 degrees C or 85 degrees Fahrenheit for the battery inlet temperature. However, I've gone all the way up to 56 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit and still had max performance if the battery percentage is still close to 100%. The ideal battery inlet temperature appears to be 52.4 degrees C or about 94 degrees Fahrenheit. At that temperature, I saw my highest max discharge value of 462 kilowatts. Please note that this is not indicating the maximum power that the car can produce. 462 kilowatts would be 628 horsepower, and the car can't produce that much power. It probably produces close to 500 horsepower at the wheels. If the max discharge rate drops to 452 kilowatts, battery percentage drops below 95%, or the battery inlet temperature drops to 45 degrees C, then I've seen performance drop off slightly. As you go further and further below those values, performance will degrade even more. If you supercharge to 100%, Use the navigation to preheat the battery until just before you start the run and have the car in sport mode, then you can achieve maximum performance with a stock Tesla Model 3 performance. That will put you right around 11.55 at 116 miles per hour for the quarter mile. However, there are some things you can do that will actually hurt the performance, even if you do everything else correctly. If you put the car into track mode, then it will actually cool the components of the car instead of warming them. For max straight line acceleration, this isn't good. However, you can run into a situation where the battery is too warm, so navigating to a supercharger won't trigger the preconditioning. 
In that case, enabling track mode can cool the battery off enough to where you can then turn off track mode and navigate back to the supercharger. That will allow preconditioning to work again. That uses up battery though. I've seen track mode and preconditioning draw as much as two kilowatt while the car is in park. However, the air conditioning draws the most power. I've seen the AC draw more than six kilowatt when everything else is turned off. Definitely turn your AC off if you want maximum acceleration. You have to balance whether using battery power to optimize temperature is worth it or not. It will help if you have a way to charge at the place where you are testing acceleration. Our track has NEMA 1450 RV outlets right next to the track, so we can slow charge while optimizing the battery temperature. If you leave navigation on during your acceleration test, that can also slow the car down considerably. Don't forget to cancel the navigation right before you start your run. You can also modify the car to make it faster. The 20 inch Uber turbine wheels that come on the more recent cars are just entirely too large and heavy. Mine weighed 56 pounds with wheels, tires, TPMS sensors, and center caps. I switched to the 18 inch T Sport Line TS5 wheels and Michelin Pilot Sport PS4S tires which weighed 46 pounds altogether. Jason from Engineering Explain had done tests with the same setup and found that it can make the car about 0.08 seconds faster for zero to 60 miles per hour. With my new smaller lighter wheels, I saw the same 0.08 second improvement from zero to 60 miles per hour all the way through the quarter mile. I was able to test my 100% stock Model 3 with Uber heavy wheels and the same car with the 18 inch wheels at the track under identical conditions. I had two nearly identical 11.42 and 11.40 at 117 mile per hour runs with 18 inch wheels and then the best I could do with the 20 inch wheels was an 11.48 second run. Those time differences aren't that massive when you consider the wheels, tires, and TPMS sensors cost about $3,000 altogether with the 10% discount T-Sport line had. However, I've done eight quarter mile runs with 18 inch wheels and every single run was faster than my fastest time with the 20 inch uber heavy wheels. Lighter wheels and tires won't make a monumental difference, but it absolutely will make a measurable and consistent difference as long as you go smaller and lighter instead of just using lighter 20 inch wheels. Some people have tried lighter 20 inch wheels and they saw no difference in acceleration. Engineering Explained did a great job in his video of explaining exactly why you must go with smaller and lighter wheels instead of just using lighter wheels of the same size. This is why Brooks from Drag Times didn't see any acceleration differences when he used lighter 20 inch T Sport line wheels on his Model 3 performance instead of the older 20 inch sport wheels that came stock on his car. I was able to do an 11.40 at 115 mile per hour quarter mile run at the Rockingham drag strip with the 20 inch Uber heavy wheels. That was by far my fastest stock quarter mile time. However, I hit an absolutely astonishing 11.271 at 121.79 miles per hour in the quarter mile under ideal conditions at the same track last night. There was a five mile per hour tailwind this time and I was able to charge at the track so I could do runs with 100% battery and full preconditioning. Those things helped a lot but the wheels definitely made a difference on this particular track as well. Rockingham has just under a negative 1% slope. Most of the other tracks in North Carolina are much closer to flat or some are even slightly uphill. Drag racing allows down to a negative 1% slope, so Rockingham has been the fastest track in our area for me. If a track is flat, or especially if it has any part of it that is uphill, it will make the weight of the vehicle affect the car's acceleration more. This makes the benefit of reducing the size and weight of the wheels less. With Rockingham's downhill slope, especially near the end of the quarter mile, the smaller lighter wheels really make a significant difference in the trap speed you can reach at the end of the run. I was at least three miles per hour faster with 18 inch wheels at Rockingham than I was with the stock 20 inch wheels. I also have the unplugged performance front lip that they claim reduces drag. I haven't been able to confirm that claim with any of my testing, but I certainly know it doesn't hurt at all. It also offers a great way to protect the car's paint from rock chips on the front lip. That is why I originally got it. In order to maximize your Tesla Model 3's acceleration, you need to precondition the battery to increase the battery temperature as much as possible. You need to charge up as close to 100% as you can get. You also need to reduce the size and weight of all four wheels without increasing tire width. Finally, you must make sure you have it in sport mode with the navigation and AC turned off. 
Just mash the go pedal from a dig and you might be able to do an 11.271 at 121.79 miles per hour quarter mile in your Model 3 performance.